Proceeding, I'd like to acknowledge the Tasmanian Aboriginal community as the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting tonight and pay respects to elders past and present. I'd also like to advise uh, everyone present that the meeting is recorded audio visually and will be available on the Currency Council website later this week. Clear the meeting open and note an apology from Alderman Hume. Um, and Alderman Farman, we are expecting to right. Item 2, confirmation of minutes for the 27th of February. A circulator be taken as read and confirmed. Alderman Pearce, seconded Alderman Cusick. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Nothing to report at item 3. Item 4, that Council notes the workshops conducted on the 6th and 14th of March and the agenda brief on the 17th of March. Thank you, Honourable Chong, Alderman Thurley. Thank you. All those in favour? Very generously. Item 5, declarations of interest to Alderman or close associate. Being none. Item 6, there are no petitions on the agenda. Are there any petitions to table? Okay. Item 7 is public question time. There are no matters on notice. Are there any questions from members of the public without notice? Thank you. Item 8 is deputations by members of the public. General Manager. Mr. Mayor, we have one speaker this evening, Jan Dawes of Montague Bay, who wishes to address council in relation to the Fitness in the Park program. Can you come forward, please? I do need to point out that I do need to point out that under the meeting regs, we only, only can allow three minutes, and there will be a tone of two and a half to remind you. There will be a tone of two and a half minutes to give you an <laughs> opportunity to wind up. Uh, no. Sorry, it should be. Each year, many of the people who attend this in the park email or write to our council thanking you for this great program. This year, we thought that we would personally thank you all for maintaining this relatively unique program for your citizens. At the Wellness Conference you hosted in November for other Tasmanian councils, I was proud to represent our participants and sing the praises of fitness in the park. We have noted that recently the Hobart City Council is trialling a similar program, proving that Clarence City Council is the trendsetter. This fantastic program has been in operation for the past eight years, and in 2013 it was offered to beginners and over 50. I turned up on the first morning session to find five other women, plus a trainer, ready to exercise. The good news spread quickly and our numbers have continued to increase. Just some data for you. 
50 to 60 individuals participate in the morning fitness sessions and many of us attend more than one session per week. Approximately 65% are on a low income, which includes pension, part-time work or a self-funded retirement plan. At least 85% of our participants are over the age of 50 and nearly 30% of us live alone. As you can understand from these stats, expensive gym membership or personal trainers are out of reach for the majority of our participants. And I'm sure that you will also realise that due to the average age of the participants, various health issues are prominent. Fitness in the past has already had a positive influence on our fitness level, weight and mental health. And for this alone, we are exceptionally grateful for this program. We have also benefited socially, making new friends and having a great laugh in a supportive atmosphere. It, is a, it has especially enabled those of us who live alone a point of reference in creating wider social networks. Exercising in the fresh air among our beautiful surrounding environment is a delight and it also gives us our vitamin D dose for the day. My personal journey since joining Fitness in the Park has been one of a significant improved level of fitness, both physically and mentally. For several years I've been taking antidepressants and two years ago I felt well enough to stop taking this medication. I'm sure that the reason of group exercise has enabled this to happen. Many other members of the group have various personal stories of benefits of this program. And for instance, one of our participants moved from interstate five months ago and Google County City Council uh, to see um, what activities were available in this area um, that she, where she could make friends. And fitness in the park suited her really well. We feel very fortunate to have a council who is so far sighted that it sees the importance of personal fitness as a way of preventing medicine, as a preventive medicine for its citizens. So on behalf of the participants of fitness in the park, I'd like to thank you all for providing this tremendous program and look forward to being able to continue taking the advice and expertise of the trainers and employees of this outstanding fitness program for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. The council meeting is not an opportunity for applause or entertainment or a venue like that. Everyone's got to be able to talk without fear or favour on both sides of the argument. And so that sort of disruption is definitely not uh, in conducive to that taking place. So please ask you to respect the uh, dignity of the Chamber. Item 9 is motions on notice. Item 9.1, Alderman Cusick. Now, do we have a seconder, please? Alderman Campbell, thank you. Would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mr Mayor. <coughs> Why now? I believe we've had enough time, data and information to now make a decision on this particular matter. Some might say, wait. We have received all the data and information from the consultant SGS. We had the opportunity, the opportunity of numerous briefings and had a final briefing from SGS two weeks ago, having had the report for several weeks prior to that. <coughs> It might be said we haven't had a summary report from the general manager. But with due respect to the general manager, we already have all the information we ought to be able to make up our own. It might also be argued we should consult with the residents of Clarence. I fully, I fully respect their intellectual capacity, but what do we make available? The SGS report, the UGS report, which in key aspects uh, contradicts the SGS report, the SGS report is that thick, the UGS that thick. Reports, these reports are full of data, statistics, graphs, tables, and we expect our residents to read and to expect our residents to read, to absorb, and then to analyse and come up with an answer. That's just on the one report and then repeated on the other, which are, as I said, is often contradictory. All this without any opportunity for in-depth briefing we have received. I believe it would be an unreal expectation. We are elected to make, to, to make such decisions, let's do so. Why do I say no merger? The $390 million economic benefit over 20 years 
which is identified in the report. Let's look at that. $10 million financial loss, which the report says may lead to increased rates. And I quote, the merged entity, the, um, the financial modelling backed by experience of recent mergers uh, elsewhere in Australia suggests net costs of merger for options two and four to amalgamation, which will result in increased costs which may require rate increases if no assistance is received from the state government. Infrastructure transport gain of $274 million. 70% of the total economic gain is through transport infrastructure improvement. Merging four councils in itself will not achieve this. The strategic alliance I'm proposing has as much chance of achieving this goal. Also a $68 million tourism yield. So $340 million of the $390 million is achieved from transport and tourism improvement. If these can be achieved by a merger, they can be achieved by a strategic alliance. Part of the transport gain, the report says, is more centralised employment. Is that what we want? We want to move employment out of our local areas into the city. Of course, the only merger option based on the report is a four council merger. It's a three council merger, Hobart, Glenorchy and Clarence, ranks behind the strategic alliance in, in the SDS report. It is stated to be a better option than the three council merger. Representation would drop by at least half, let's say four, uh, say four councils, for instance 20 councillors or aldermen, that's um, five each, down from 12. Probably, uh, so that's a reduction of more than 50% and, and um, only one quarter of the representation that we have when we have total uh, management of this council. For the benefits of the residents of Clarence, on the evidence of this report, I believe pursuing the option of strategic alliance provides by far the best outcome for Clarence, its residents and its rate payers. Well, I believe that Alderman Cusick uh, outlined the whole situation very well. We have been through this time and time again. We've spent a lot of time on it. It's, it's diverting Council's attention from its real core business and that we have the reports. It's time to make a decision and turn the decision on the matter. Thanks, Thank you, Mr. Back. Clark is in a unique position in this whole debate, being involved in two potential amalgamations. Greater Hobart on one side, some combination of Clarence, Hobart, Glenorchy and Kingborough. Greater South East on the other, Clarence, again, Sorrell, Tasman, Potential and Northern Spring Bay. We've received, as Alderman Cusick has said, extensive reports on both, but are still waiting on some analysis that we, that we as a council requested to verify some of the underlying assumptions that have been made in the reports. To my mind, it's very premature to consider one report in isolation. To do the best for our ratepayers, we must consider all the options before we recommend anything for our community. And despite the comment earlier, I do not believe that the community do not want to have a say in this. I think this is the most important decision that we as a council and our community will make in a very long time. And I think that the community will want to have their say, and they can only have their say if we give them the best information possible. Making a decision just on one report is not giving them the best information possible, and I will not be supporting the future. Alderman Walker. Look, <coughs> this motion is not well canvassed, and whilst I support every alderman's right to take or table a notice of motion, I can't support the process surrounding this one and the effect of making a decision on one study in isolation of the other. As a point of agreement with uh, Alderman Cusick, the financials don't stack up with the SGS report. But this motion is written about stopping one way forward uh, and not really going about the best way forward. And we're getting hints towards a strategic alliance but at not actually naming up what that might be. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll only say it once, but I've talked about contract city councils um, for a very long time, and that is not part of the strategic alliance mix, and that is probably a good record. So this is about ruling one thing out, but we're not actually talking about other things and bringing the best thing forward. 
Um, and the other thing is that this notice of motion deflates our council's prestige in the uh, investigation process which started over two years ago. Clarence started out with a, with a without prejudice approach. We didn't intuitively think something made sense or not. We said, we'll talk to any surrounding neighbouring councils who want to and we'll see how it goes. And that's how we ended up being involved in two studies. Um, and you know, we, we took a whole day offline to do strategic planning around the principles for the studies and around the processes. And I think that made a robust template for both studies uh, and, and something that was utilised by all councils. Um, in fact, we even deferred, considering the 2000, the, in, in the end of um, 2015, the, the KPMG report because that wasn't robust enough and we needed them to firm up some of the things they were going to look into. And you want to talk about studies? Well, as far as the SGS one goes, we were the only um, council with old women that went along as observers to those steering committee meetings. And, you know, I think on the KPMG side, some people from other councils came along once as observers. But we did that because the seriousness and gravity of this matter deserved, you know, thorough and uh, consideration at every point along. Um, now, my understatement of the year would be that I was underwhelmed with the shortlisting process for the consultants, and that I was disgruntled around the selection process of that shortlist. But it has been a very long process, which, make, which makes it all the more essential that we deliberate in a thorough and considered fashion. Now. We might as a council understand that the SGS report shows that this thing doesn't stack up on financials, but that point I don't think has been completely understood by the, third, the fourth estate to this state, and um, I suspect by the general community either. Um, and the other thing about this notice of motion, it is absolutely devoid of any, any um, response towards the minister's, minister's guiding principles, and that's something that I think is really quite important. It really does smack of decision making on the run, and if I would say if there are any South Park um, watchers in the in the gallery, that this is the Eric Cartman approach to to coming to a decision. Um, and I'll paraphrase; I don't want to use the exact catchphrase, but basically, it's spew you guys. I'm going home. Look, I am going to finish this up now with one key point that we really need to think about, and that is to say that it is absolute bunkum to say that the KPMG report and SGS report are separate issues and should be considered separately. They are not. They are completely intertwined because they are about reform and we need to go out with a um, considered decision on both of those and a coherent message because if we just do one little bit in isolation and come back to another, uh, we're not going to get the best outcome and we're certainly not going to be able to explain it well. So uh, I won't be supporting this at this time. Mayor, I wish to put the procedural motion that the matter be deferred until a future council meeting where council considers in the governance section of the agenda both the SGS Greater Hobart Local Government Reform Final Feasibility Report and the KPMG South East Council Feasibility Study Final Report. Have a second for that procedural motion, Alderman Jones. Being a procedural motion, there's no debate, so I'll put the motion, which is that uh, this matter be deferred uh, to further to a further meeting in accordance with the motion. Do you have the words to that, then? Matter be deferred until a future council meeting where council considers in the governance section of the agenda both reports, etc. So, all those in favour? Against? The motion is carried and the matter is deferred. Uh, item uh, 10, item 10.1, reports from single and joint authorities. Uh, Southern Tasmanian Council's authority, uh, notwithstanding the agenda, there are no reports outstanding for STCA. Copying refuse disposal site joint authority, Alden Campbell. Report be received. Thank you, Alderman Chong. Any uh, discussion on the copying report? Those in favour? Carried unanimously. Southern Waste Strategy Authority, Alderman Jones. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there is a note here that the quarterly report is pending. That's the September quarterly report. Um, I would like to report to Council that um, I had a discussion with David Sales last week, who was the uh, CEO of Southern Waste Strategy up to the date we decided to dissolve, well, move to have it dissolved. And um, I have been advised that Parent City Council will receive in the order of about $6,000 or thereabouts as part of the distribution of the surplus funds of the authority. Uh, and that um, monies, funds, will be for the Council in the next week or two. The other matter in relation to quarterly reports, I know we've raised this before, or have raised this before, but um, as soon as um, I'm able to get some information from David Sales and the chair of the ex swasa <laughs> um, that, that I can then table that at council with regard to no further reports that will be required and, and hopefully we'll have a need for a report from uh, the Southern, Southern Waste Strategy Authority from that point on. So at the moment, we're in abeyance and until I have further information, I'll advise the council accordingly. Go to Tasmanian Water Corporation. Uh, Notwithstanding all the um, hype and uh, rhetoric in the media, uh, councils are still waiting for further information from the government and we expect to hear that from the Minister on the 7th of April at the Elgat General Meeting in Launceston. Well, Abby, take question on the judge. Um, there's been a lot of discussion in the media in relation to whether or not the, um, the time that has been proposed by TAS Water for the, um, I suppose, to provide the fresh drinking water for those towns and villages in Tasmania and so on that obviously do not have fresh drinking water. And there's been a, a response from the, um, the state government that by taking over TAS Water they can in fact um, speed up the process. Is there any update on that? I know there's been a number of media releases that have been forwarded and there's always been a response from the government liaison officer in response to those. Uh, in your capacity as President of LGAP, are you able to provide the Council with any update on as to whether or not um, it's good, bad or indifferent in relation to the time frame for potable water? <laughs> and fresh water to those villages and towns in Tasmania. Thank you, Robin James. I'd like to answer that in regard to being Parents Council's representative okay. on the owner's representative group of Tasmania. Okay. And I can advise that the uh, corporation uh, will have all boiled water and do not consume alerts removed before the projected takeover date by the state government. That is uh, July next year, that all the water problems would have been fixed. Item 10.2, uh, reports from Council and Special Committees and other representative bodies. Are there any reports? Alderman Tom. I'd like to table the minutes of the January meeting of the Richmond Advisory Committee and the Howard Community Centre. Who on Bombardo, I think, was next? Table the minutes of the Bicycle Steering Committee for the 16th of January, which have been confirmed by the Chair. Who Alderman Thurley? Uh, the Bell Roof Community Arts Centre annual general meeting and the general meeting of the 8th of March. Thank you. Other reports? All in uh, Just a report in relation to the formal opening of the Kangaroo Bay Rivulet walking track. That'll be this Wednesday and I suggest everybody put on their, boot, their walking boots because we're leaving from the Integrated Health Centre and we're going to trek through the city uh, down to uh, Gordon's Hill Road and then uh, we're having a little bit of a, a function, is that right Mr General Manager at the barn and the Mayor will be saying a few words and as Chair of the Tracks and Trust will be saying a few words as well. So everybody's welcome, it's a great event, the community have been after this for many years and it's finally, this Council has done and delivered. So thank you all on the day.
Any other reports? Item 11, 11.1, 11 the information in the weekly briefing reports of the 27th of February, 6th and 13th of March be noted. Thanks, Alderman Pearce. Second, Alderman Cusick. Any questions on the weekly briefing reports? Being none, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Raise your hand, sir. Item 11.2, there are no petitions to deal with, so Council now intends to sit as a planning authority under the Land Use Planning and Approvals Act. Item 11.3.1 is a development application, uh, Lot 3, 9 to Loon Street, Lindisfarne. Thank you, Alderman Cusick. Alderman McFarlane. Speakers. Hey, uh, Mr Mayor, this is a 550 square metre block of vacant land in a very desirable location. All the representation issues have been addressed by officers, so I recommend uh, approval. Alderman Farmer. Alderman James. Uh, a question through you to Mr Lovell, Mr Mayor. On page 28, it refers to the pri under 10.4.601, uh, privacy for all dwellings. Uh, the acceptable solutions goes into detail, of course, about the balcony deck roof terrace and that the has a finished surface of floor level more than one metre above natural ground level. And also to the side boundary and less the balcony deck roof parking has a setback of at least three metres from the side boundary. Uh, there's non-compliance with regard to that. Could Mr Lovell explain uh, in as to why under performance criteria they have come up with their decision, the officers, to recommend this approval, uh, given that the the uh, setback on page 28 uh, is uh, in non-compliance. Excuse me, I'm going to address that as you were doing. The setback in question relates to the adjoining The motion which is recommending approval subject to conditions and advice. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. 7.3.2 is subdivision application at 352 Jellibrand Drive, Sanford for a three lot subdivision. Alderman Pierce, thank you. Second to Alderman Chong. Would you like to speak to it? Thank you, Mayor. There were three representations. One was vehicle access, which I, I think uh, in the comments the council engineer has uh, assessed the proposal and uh, has been conditioned. So I think that's quite a, quite a good result there. And the other one was public open space. Now, I'm just more interested in public open space by what the objectors said in the comments by our staff. And I actually totally agree with the, the comments of our staff. I think it's a much better outcome. What else is recommendation? Uh, by the reply on the so I put the motion for approval. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. 11.3.3 is a subdivision application 128 and 130 Tremere Road, Arrow for a two lot subdivision. Alderman Carlin, thank you. Alderman Cusick, town. Speakers? Oh, just uh, to support the officer's recommendation, it's a good info area. Excellent outcome for our local residents. Speakers, Alderman James. Uh, there were nine representatives in relation to this, um, and the officers have gone through as they would normally do to address these comments. Um, there is um, a, a number of matters that have been uh, raised by the object uh, representatives, and I and I would like just to. Uh, address a couple of those matters. First of all, the adverse impact upon privacy and the overshadowing. Now, the overshadowing uh, matter is, um, as far as the uh, acceptable solutions is concerned, it does not meet it. And then, under the performance criteria, it goes through a number of uh, aspects of the performance criteria to try to address it. Even so, 
uh, under B on page 72, there's insufficient width between the two existing dwellings on the lots to construct a new road to provide access to the rear of the, of the lots. Now, uh, I suppose the only reason that, that the performance criteria is being um, uh, is sort of clarifying the matter is that it's it is not reasonably possible to provide a new road to create a standard frontage lot. So perhaps if I could direct my question through you to Mr. Lovell, in his capacity as a city planner. Now, Mr. Lovell, um, given that the performance criteria states, I'm just using one example here on page 72B, that the lot constitutes the only reasonable way to subdivide the rear lot of an existing lot. How is it then that the comment that's been made um, substantiates that for the officers to at least give it a tick in the box? Yes, constitutes the only reasonable way to subdivide the rear of the existing lot. Um, so regardless of whether we have a, a road there or not, why is it possible to be able to say that it's that under performance criteria it's not a, it's not um, possible and then uh, in the comment column, it's insufficient width between that to construct a new road. So you're going to, you can't construct a new road if it hasn't got the width to get to it. Yeah, I just to answer that question, this is a right of way that will be getting uh, put in place with a total width of four point metres wide with reciprocal right of way over it and that is in excess of the minimum requirement for a right of way which is three point six. So basically it's just a driveway. Um, this area is will be looked at in fine detail by a lot of local developers with plans are builders as a prime area for infill in the future. I think that this is an indication, this particular application is a clear indication of where that development will go. Recommendation is for approval subject to conditions of advice. All those in favour? Against? Carried. 11.3.4 is a development application at 34 Oak Bank Road, Otago for a dwelling. Thanks, Alderman Cusick. Second, Alderman McFarlane. Would you like to speak to it, Alderman Cusick? So, uh, Mr Mayor, it's a large lot, 4,872 4, square metres, with one representation re relating to stormwater, which has been answered and addressed by the officers. Another prime development area for lot sizes with the new statewide planning scheme where we'll be seeing a lot of these coming up. No need for a right of reply there. The motion is uh, recommending approval subject to conditions and advice for those in favour. Uh, unanimously and that concludes our business and planning authority. Thank you. There's nothing under customer service, asset management, financial management. 11.7 governance, 11.7.1 is the draft dog control amendment bill. Alderman Campbell, moved. Seconded Alderman McFarlane, thank you. Speakers. Um, 
Alderman McFarnell, would you like to speak a second? Alderman Jones. Look, um, I just uh, would like to uh, seek some advice in relation to uh, the Clarence Interim Planning Scheme provisions and the Dog Control Act in relation to um, the number of dogs that can now be kept in a uh, suburban environment as distinct from the old scheme which and the council's prior planning scheme there were some well policies and there was some limitation on the number of dogs that could be so my question through you to Mr. Tui, I think, in his capacity as the officer responsible. Uh, Mr. Tui, is there any overlap in relation to the dog the amendments to the Dog Control Act and also to what constitutes uh, a kennel licence or the number of dogs that can be kept in suburbia under Clarence's infant, infant planning scheme, please? Were you there? <coughs> Hunting scheme would only become relevant if it was a, a boarding carriage, a kennel, or some other commercial operation. Uh, just to clarify then, uh, this amendment's not going to change those provisions. Right? Thank you. Any other speakers? Do I reply to them, Cam? Put the motion, which is that we note the draft bill and forward the report. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Item 11.7.2, a visit to Binjau City. That uh, recommendation notes the makeup of the group and the timing of the delegation. Thank you, Alderman McFarland. Do we have a seconder, please? Alderman Thurley, thank you. Would you like to speak to it, Alderman McFarland? Oh, just briefly. Um, I believe this is a, an important step in the direction to looking forward to working with the uh, Binjau City and further our relationship with them in the future. We have for a long time been looking at um, different city relationships or business uh, interaction and this will be initiate those discussions and I look forward to the outcome and reports from fellow aldermen who are attending now. Um, Mr Mayor, behind the scenes we've discussed this quite um, intensively and we all supported the, um, the visit and I noted that in 2013 our report um, noted that any future city, city friendship relationship should be focused on China, included China um, and Southeast Asia area. So this is the, the um, something coming together after um, years of actually trying to get something together. So it, it, it fits in well with where our current um, economic future is as well. So we have a lot to learn. Thank you. Mm. Well, James. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I must correct the uh, 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 do not support this trip to China and made the comment and I make it again that one of the matters that will be discussed with Chandong which is the 
investment company that's working with Hunter Developments to build the new hotel and the uh, TAFE Training Centre, Kangaroo Bay, will be, I believe, discussed at this meeting uh, with the, um, at the Binzau City. The timing of this is inappropriate. We only dealt with the Kangaroo Bay and the TAFE Education Facility uh, earlier this year. And prior to that, there was an invitation extended to this council for council delegation to visit the city. And that came from Inzao, and it was done in conjunction, I understand, with Chandong. So the impression that it can convey to the public is that council is accepting an invitation and it was invitation was issued before council made a decision on the uh, development application at Kangaroo Bay. At the time, the invitation, uh, council did respond to the invitation and said, look, at this stage, we're not, not able to send a delegation because the matter is still before the council. So after the matter was dealt by council, then council decided to send a delegation to Binzau <coughs> and a number of persons, uh, their names obviously were drawn, uh, were obviously considered and this recommendation is for the uh, official delegation to be comprised of those persons listed there and also to, there was an invitation extended to other members to go in the delegation but at their own expense. The question of the payment of this for the five um, official dele dele uh, delegates is about 3,500 each and that does specifically come out of the out of council ratepayers' monies. There is an allocation that's provided to uh, aldermen to use for training and education purposes. But in this instance, the delegation, or the official delegation fees, will, um, travel expenses, will be paid out of not their own specific, uh, what we call, allocation for travel or allocation to attend a training session. So look, at the end of the day, it's too soon. It's not sending a very good message to the community that we are going to send a delegation of six, well, at least uh, the Mayor and three other uh, aldermen as the official delegation and three other aldermen in totaling six. And the discussion that will occur over there may be in relation to Chandong and also to there may be some discussion within this memorandum of understanding which will be signed by the Mayor and the Vice President, I understand, could entail, I'm not saying it would, but could entail discussion revolving around the 840,000 shortfall in car parking and that's the cash in lieu that the company is required to spend in relation to um, a deficit in the car parking. Now there could be a discussion about that and I think that if there was a discussion about that it would be most inopportune given that there is still some concern Board of Enchange, about I think the you're speculating a bit here. Um, are there any other speakers? All in doubt. As you may know, I think this uh, delegation to um, Binjou is um, essential. You know, when you're dealing with uh, an Asian culture, you've really got to start off on a social basis. It's not like in the Western world where you go in there, you make a deal, and the has gone. You've got to build up trust, you've got to build up 
social responsibility. Uh, rap, rap poor, uh, they look at your families, they look at your hobbies, they look at all these things. We think we discard them as being nothing, but it's very important for these people to build up. And I think this is an excellent time to go over there, to start on or continue on with what is going down in Hungary Bay. The permit's already been issued. That's, that's a done deal. And uh, the fact that all of the early uh, peers and who are willing to go at their own expense to reinforce those already there, it only adds to the uh, status of this council that we are so interested in and we respect them and that's a big, big factor. It's called give respect. If you read up on uh, Chinese culture, you've got to give respect. If you don't give respect, they won't give back respect back to you. And I think this is a, a wonderful opportunity and I really admire those people who are willing to you go there on their own expense to reinforce this concept of give respect. And just very briefly, because obviously a number of us have done some research looking at things out before we, we go in that direction. Um, and I guess I should just like to elucidate that Shandong Shanbroad is one of the companies in the area, but it's actually not one of the biggest companies there by a very long way. Their actual main industries are in agriculture and tourism, things that resonate really well with Clarence and make a great deal of sense for us to have discussions on. We're going there as result of an invitation from the mayor of Bintang, not a company, but the, but the local government officials there, because they see that it would be good to have a relationship with us. And we're going as a first step to analyse that and see whether that makes sense for us too. And I think it's appropriate that we, that we do that, not to spurn their invitation, which is ultimately, as I said, would be very insulting to turn down the invitation. I think it's important that we do go and we show appropriate respect to them. For you, Mr. Mayor, I'd actually like to ask the general manager if he could see the funds are coming from for those. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, there is an aggregate aggregation of funds that council sets aside in the budget each year for sister city relationships and also that council allocates each of them a certain uh, amount each year which can be aggregated across several years for um, uh, major conferences, sister city events and the like. So essentially those forming part of council's official delegation will be joint funded by both of those sources. Funding. So that actually means that the alderman allows Will actually the, the the actual travel allowance doesn't fit part of your formal aldermanic allowance. It's ancillary to that. Uh, uh, um, so it, it's you, your alderman's allowance is something that is prescribed by by statute. Above and beyond that, council can give provide allowances and support in excess of that. One of the supports that council provides and makes available to each alderman is an allowance of $2,000 per year uh, for major conferences, sister city visits and the like. Um, so that's the source of funding for part of it. If um, that can be aggregated under council's policy across three financial years to a maximum of 6000 anything not used within that period um, nearly lapses. I think it's uh, very important to state for the record too that uh, we're actually responding to a visit from the uh, last year, the Deputy Mayor from Bin Zhao, who <coughs> came down here for an official visit, a civic visit, and uh, that uh, Deputy Mayor is now the Mayor and he's responded by inviting us to uh, reciprocate the visit. So it's in that context that it's a civic visit. It's also in the context, as Alderman Chong pointed out, that it's responding to business opportunities and as Alderman Dowds pointed out as well, it's a matter of developing rec uh, respect between two civic communities. Are there any other speakers? Right of reply? Thank you, Alderman Farr. Um, I burrow down in my thinking as I do in my book 
And for me, the Kangaroo Bay development gave us an opportunity to look at providing educational opportunities. <laughs> for me, that's what part of the decision making mm -hmm. was. So within that context, I saw it as a part of uh, a way of us expanding the educational facilities in Clarence to an external body. And then when we look at that, parents want to be suitably um, educated about where they're sending their children to. So if we look at long-term educational and tourism opportunities coming out of the development at Kangaroo Bay, the long-term interaction between us and Benzau is the key to expanding on anything that happens. The, the development application might have been approved. It, it may well, there could be some reason why that doesn't get up. But in the long run, this particular step from their business community is exceptional from my point of view. And I believe, like with the sister city relationship we have with the Kishi, that we have got a two-way sharing opportunity for the future. If I was a parent living in a country and sending my children so far away, I would want to have some kind of um, belief that the situations they were going into were not only formally responsible but also um, acknowledge the need for those students to be cared for in our community. I look forward to, in the future, being able to expand on those educational um, opportunities because that's what Tasmania is known for. Well, the motion is that Council notes the makeup of the group and the timing of the delegation. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Item 12 is Alderman's question time. There are no matters on notice. Questions without notice. Can we start with you, please. Yeah, through you to the general manager, uh, have we actually had a briefing and you're aware of it in relation to a meeting between yourself and the police in relation to Stoke Creek? Certainly haven't had a workshop about it, but I thought Mr Graham issued a, uh, a briefing note in respect of that. I'll check on that tomorrow and make sure that if we haven't got it, it's reissued. But there was a summary note came out from Mr Graham, I believe. Thank you, Mayor. Now, I was going to raise this on Thursday with probably Mr Graham, but my question is, can we do something about the parking at Kangaroo Bay? We've got a car park there, which is very good. But it's only, it's not well signed, and I wonder should we use the word free parking? Because there's a lot of cars parking there for a hell of a lot of long hours, and I think a lot of them catching the bus to town. So can something be done to make sure that that parking is more highlighted? That's, that's in the cage. Yeah, Mayor Council has resolved to put a temporary gravel car park in there too, so that should be proceeding in the next few weeks. Uh, yeah, thanks. Now, just the old uh, perennial, Begonia Street. Uh, gentlemen, did you suggest some weeks ago that there might be a further traffic assessment study on the um, Through you, Mr Mayor, we've done additional traffic counts. Um, we'll be reporting them back to Council via a, a briefing report or a report of some nature in the next... Okay, we'll, okay, we'll follow up on that one, but yes, um, just for the record, I think the tra traffic counts we've undertaken have shown that the traffic numbers through there actually increased. Yeah. Alderman Chong. 
No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I would like due to the fact that there was yet another car in the state of And this time we had the fire brigade from the Claren station, and so that gentleman hadn't met me before, so <laughs> I heard about the south arm speed problems, etc. Uh, the question is? The question is, with regard to the report being put forward, could I ask to the relevant staff member um, what priorities are going to come forward out of that report? Um, uh, well, that will obviously be subject to whatever council determines in respect of the report, the priorities will be. But essentially the issues to be covered, Mr Graham will correct me if I omit any here, are um, uh, issues rela in relation to the landowners providing um, uh, delegated authority to the police in respect of trespass, uh, issues for council in relation to um, putting immovable barriers at certain points, access, key access points to the land in question, and thirdly, uh, sorry, thirdly a clean up of the creek and the vehicles, and um, fourthly uh, a police advise an increased police presence in the area, particularly if they can get the no trespass approvals and authorisations from the landowners. So I'd leave any out for to that is, will we have to wait to initiate any action for budget allocation or can we initiate some works now? Uh, council can approve works ex budget subject to a motion modifying the budget, but uh, we may have funds within the budget. I'd like, before I sort of delve into that, I'd like to await the report coming forward. Actually, it is listed for discussion at a council workshop, I think, next week. It's Monday night. Firstly, I had a, a distressing call from a gentleman in Carrier Road, Risdendale, um, making a couple of comment that um, there's very little activity in relation to when the street sweeper will be out in that area. So. Last time it was about three months ago. I'll have to advise that one through the briefing report. I'm sure Ross doesn't know the. Uh, I think he does. Uh, yes, I think he does. Uh, Unless you pre warned pre him, he okay. should be right. able to. Sorry. The briefing report announced the last week, but certainly approved the briefing. Last time when I was there was just before Christmas. Good. And second question is in relation to the Lauderdale footpath remedial program. I question through you to Mr. Graham, his capacity as asset manager. Mr. Graham, Mr. Gorridge, is well known to both of us. When will work commence in Bangalore and those streets that were designated for footpath remedial work in February of last year? Please. Bangalore uh, Street. Yeah, we've got a list of all the streets. Right. Two pages long. On, on all right. The streets, and it's really long to Thank you. All right. That uh, brings us to uh, the closed meeting. Need a uh, motion to that, please. Alderman Dow, thank you. Second, Alderman McFarland. All those in favour? Carried unanimously.